The menstrual cycle is one of the more difficult parts of the reproduction system to understand. Um, it requires you understanding some of the reproductive anatomy. Uh, it requires you to understand the endocrine system. And also you need to have an understanding of homeostasis. Um, mostly in the body, homeostasis is regulated by negative feedback loops. And basically what that means is when change occurs because of some stimulus and a product uh, or an effector uh, performs some sort of action, uh, that action or the product that it does uh, forms a feedback loop which goes back to try and mitigate uh, the stimulus and to kind of return the body to its um, set point. So for example, if we have a set point of 37 degrees, um, as our body gets hotter, we would try and give off some of that heat to bring our temperature back down to our core set point. Let's go ahead and try and break up the menstrual cycle into the little pieces to uh, hit upon these ideas and then we'll kind of put them together to see how it all works. Uh, why don't we do the anatomy first? So if you take a look at this screen here, um, let's talk about the organs involved in the menstrual cycle. Well, first of all, we have the ovaries, uh, two ovaries in the reproductive system of the woman, um, and then we have the uterus. But what we're really interested in is a buildup of the uterine wall, and that's called the endometrium. And that's going to be the layer where the egg is actually going to implant itself if it gets fertilized. So from now on, let's refer to the uterus as the endometrium. In the same way, the purpose of the ovary, of course, is to produce an egg. Uh, but there's a large layer that surrounds the egg which gets built up uh, during the menstrual cycle, and that's called the follicle. So I'm also going to refer uh, now, instead of saying the egg, I'll call it the follicle. And that's a good word to use for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, you can now understand that follicle stimulating hormone, which comes from the pituitary, is actually used to stimulate the egg or the follicle. And also, it's analogous to the male reproductive system. So in our male system, the sperm would also be called the follicle, and it would also be under the um, effect of follicle stimulating hormone. Finally, we have a new organ here. If you look way down here at the bottom, I've got something called the corpus luteum right there. Now, we haven't seen that before. The corpus luteum is a special organ which is produced after ovulation. So when the follicle ovulates and the egg is released into the fallopian tubes, what remains is now called the corpus luteum. So we don't see this until the latter part of the menstrual cycle. Okay, these are the organs. Let's go on to the next screen here. Let's talk now about the hormones involved in the menstrual cycle. I've got five of them listed here. Uh, let's go through them one at a time. First of all, GnRH. That stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. So that is, let's bring a different color up here. That is this one right here. Now that one is produced by the hypothalamus. Maybe we should just take a moment here to review what the, um, the flow chart is, the outline for how feedback works. Basically it starts in the hypothalamus, that's in the brain, and that monitors the levels of things in the bloodstream. Then the hypothalamus goes on to influence the pituitary at the base of the brain. The pituitary is considered to be the master gland. So, gonadotropin releasing hormone, let's write that down here, that would be produced in the hypothalamus. Okay. Then that hormone goes to stimulate the pituitary, and we have two hormones which are then released from the pituitary. And those are follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. So let's go ahead and write that down here. Those then come out of the pituitary. And I'll put that down here so we can all see that. Those hormones go into the bloodstream and they go down to their target organs in the endocrine system. And the target organ, of course, we're concerned about now is the ovary. So these hormones, let's go ahead and bring another color. How about green this time? These, organ, these uh, hormones 
go down to stimulate the ovary and the ovary in response to those two guys produces its hormones which are estrogen and progesterone. Let me just review that again. The hypothalamus releases gonadotropin releasing hormone. That stimulates the master gland, the pituitary, which releases FSH and LH. Those hormones go down to the ovary and in response to those hormones, the ovary releases the ovarian hormones, which are estrogen and progesterone, which will be involved in growing the endometrial wall and the follicle. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. But before we do that, let's first of all look at the stages involved. Three stages basically to the menstrual cycle. Uh, overall, the menstrual cycle takes about 28 days. Uh, in day 0 through 14, it's in the follicular stage. Now the follicular stage is called that because we're mostly interested here in the development of the follicle. So as the follicle is growing, getting bigger and bigger, under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone, that would be called the follicular stage. Finally, at about day 14 on average, let's bring another color in here, the follicle ovulates. So it ruptures and out comes the egg into the fallopian tube. That leaves behind a remnant of the follicle remaining at the ovary. Now we call that remnant the corpus luteum. And now we enter the luteal stage which goes from 14 to 28 days. And as you can guess, uh, at that point the corpus luteum is probably under control of the other pituitary hormone, luteinizing hormone. LH, and that's where it got its name from. Okay, I think we're now covered the preliminaries. We can start putting this all together. Let's take a look at a picture of what's going on here. So if you look at the stages here, as I said, from 0 to 14 days, right here, we go through the follicular stage. And you can see here how the small egg, that's the egg there, that little dot inside the larger salmon colored circle which is the follicle little dot is the egg itself you can see that the follicle is actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger again because it's under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone then at about 14 days right here on average we have ovulation the follicle ruptures out comes the egg into the fallopian tube now you can see that this salmon colored follicle no longer contains the egg and it's left as a remnant right here which we call the corpus luteum. So now from 14 to 28 days we would call this the luteal stage. And You can see that at first the corpus luteum starts to get bigger and bigger. It's under the influence remember of luteinizing hormone but after a few days in the luteal stage it starts to degenerate and decay and that's going to have big implications for what actually causes menstruation. Let's go to the next screen. Here is a negative feedback loop putting all these pieces together. Let me go ahead and uh, change my color here so you can see it. How about red? We start up here in the hypothalamus, right? That's in the brain. And the hypothalamus is releasing gonadotropin releasing hormone, which goes down and influences, let's bring a different color up here so you can see it, how about green, which influences the pituitary. And the pituitary response to that will produce its 